This is the Tom Anderson Show, broadcasting live from the KVNT studios, 7 to 9 a.m., Monday through Friday. One of my colleagues back in my four years in the state legislature is a fellow named Les Guerra. He's a Democratic former member of the Alaska State Representatives, House of Representatives, 23rd District he represented, which was downtown. 2003 to 2019, Zach Fields took his place. He's also a former assistant attorney general into the restaurant world as well, Snow City Cafe, and we'll ask him if he still is part owner of that, one of the best restaurants. I know Rick loves it as well in the state. Les Garrett joins us, thinking about maybe running for governor, going to announce if he does, I believe, in the fall. Les, how are you this morning? Good, Tom. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm happy it's Friday, and I wish it wasn't raining. I know you're an avid angler and an outdoorsman, you and your lovely bride. Do you guys get out in the rain, too, or are you a fair-weather fisherman? Uh, fish in the rain, uh, and uh, uh, a lot in the valley, you know. Um, but uh, but we're not going to talk about spots. I don't want to ruin uh, my <laughs> spots. Know, anybody up in the valley spots, uh, you know, we'd all we'd all kill each other if we uh, if we told people where you're going to get yeah. it close no, to the fishing fish vest. The rain, huh? Yeah, no, I know, and I I get out every so often. As well, growing up here, we used to go all the time in the rain, which made me almost adverse to it. But hey, bottom line is, it's summer. And a lot of people are recreating. Things are getting back open. Many things are open now. Tourism is steadily increasing. We'll get into some of these facets of of Alaska and government. Should you decide to run for governor and as governor, maybe we'll, we'll touch on what you would want or see, what's your vision for the state. Okay, while people are recreating, you're contemplating and cogitating running for governor. What made you decide to do that? Well, you know, Tom, that I, uh, I grew up, uh, my father was killed when I was six uh, by an intruder who came in and killed everybody in my dad's office. And um, so I grew up in foster care. And, and, and that's a lot like, uh, you know, most people in the sense that we don't, we, most of us don't grow up with a, lot of, with a lot of money. And I just think everybody deserves an opportunity in life, right? Uh, uh, opportunity to have a good school. If you can't afford job training or college, an opportunity to get the skills you need so you can succeed, just an opportunity to have a chance in life, right? I mean, you know, we say with liberty and justice for all, but sometimes America is with liberty and justice for those people who have a lot of money. And what about the rest of everybody else? What about, um, you know, what about your, what about your right to a construction job? I mean, it's not a right, but we've got two billion dollars worth of deferred maintenance projects around the state. And the governor basically has, has, has slashed the, the construction budget so that we've, let, we've left about 3,000 workers on the side uh, to, to do high-paying construction, engineering, architectural, trucking work. You know, we should be getting people back to work. And, uh, but when you cut the construction budget, um, and we've got a construction budget, uh, state funding is about 25% of what it was back in 2014, because we've got this budget deficit nobody wants to do anything about. Uh, it's not free. I mean, just realize that we've lost about 3,000 construction jobs, uh, construction and engineering, architectural jobs, high-paying jobs that would put people to work. Y- you just can't say everything's free. And, and you can't say that your cuts aren't harming people. I mean, not only has he erased those jobs uh, by not funding a construction budget, but... Um, yeah, or funding 25% of what was a state construction budget until 2014, you know, when we had no money and nobody, and everybody decided not to do anything about it except for spend all our savings, which is what the governor's done. We have almost none left. But um, he's also transferred, he's also adopted taxes that are indirect, that people don't realize are his. When he, he's cut over, over $100 million of state obligations to help for to pay for school bond debt, right? Uh, for school construction in local communities, when people voted on those bonds, they were told the state was going to pay sixty percent of the cost. Well, he's vetoed over a hundred million dollars of the state's obligations. There, there was a formula and statute. There was a promise made when people voted on those bonds, and he said, "Ah, oh, you know, the state's not going to pay for it." So he's vetoed uh, over a hundred million dollars of bond debt reimbursement, shifting that cost to cities and boroughs, 
and now taxpayers have to pay for it. Your tax pay, your tax bills are higher across the state in Anchorage, in the Matsu Valley, um, on the Kenai. Our tax bills are all higher than they would be if the state met its obligations. So we've essentially ad- adopted a statewide property tax. We're talking with former state representative Les Guerra, who was in for quite a long time. He was a colleague of mine. And, I mean, you are a humble person, and you're a nice guy, and pretty much everyone I know, everyone I know that, that knows you, kind of, you know, you're, you're, I've never heard a bad word about you. I'm not talking about disagreeing politically, but I'm talking about just as a person. Good guy, thoughtful. Didn't you, what law school did you go to? Oh, do we want to talk about yeah, that? Yeah, because that's a big deal. It's very hard to get into that school. Uh, well, you know, I, I, don't, I don't really love talking about it. Uh, but, you know, I, I worked my butt off when I was in high school. I knew that was my only way ahead growing up in foster care. And I was lucky to have some role models. And they said, you know, your ticket is get good grades. And so I was a nerd and I got good grades. Um, I was terrible. And, uh, you know, I was... I was, a, I was a football sort of bench warmer uh, on my football team. <laughs> I, th- I thought I should have been a star, but sure. uh, I don't know. But, um, you know, so I kept good grades. I worked my way through starting in junior high school, really. Worked my way through college, got scholarships, and, and then ended up getting into – they made a mistake and let the wrong guy in Harvard. Harvard so, Law so School. I mean, that's like the greatest law school ever. So I know folks at Yale and Stanford would say otherwise. But so so you come up here, your days in the legislature, you were engaged, you were integral in some of the decisions. Other times you might have been the guy that was, uh, you know, pounding the table saying we can go a different way. You were often in the minority, uh, not often, but I would say in some instances and on some policies but you were resolute in stature and you never back down you look now at the legislature do you, i don't envy the governor do you i mean it's a he, he doesn't choose the legislature it's a pretty difficult gauntlet to to get through how do you think you would do better for instance with this legislature what would you have done differently in terms of negotiation or discussion with them I would have said that it's time to create jobs again. You know, this governor has presided over a state where people are leaving. Uh, more than 8,000 8, more people left Alaska than came up here last year. Four years in a row, we've been an out-migration state. People don't see a future in our public schools. They don't see a future for job training in a u- university. They don't, the next generation doesn't see a future for jobs up here. And so as a, if you're a parent, you want your child to move back here sometime. Well, you want your child to do the best they can. But you sort of hope they move back here, and and a lot of youth are not coming back. You know, if you go to the University of Alaska, there's over a 50% chance you're going to stay here with the job skills you learned, and you're going to work here, and you're going to contribute to the economy. And when the governor cut over $100 million of funding for the university, um, we've lost university students, people who are going outside. If you go to school outside or job training outside, you don't come back. So what would I have done differently? I would, I would have said this, is an, this should be a state people want to live in, not a state people have to think about leaving. And I would have said, you know, we've got 3,000 construction jobs out there, uh, construction, engineering, architectural, trucking, uh, good working class jobs out there uh, that we would have if we had a budget plan so we didn't have to have this austerity construction budget. There's $2 billion of work out there that's on the state's maintenance list that we can't, that we can't get to. Um, and it's just not free to say, you know, we're going to spend nothing and then see what happens with the state. Well, what happens with the state is you have less money circulating around the economy, less money to go to a local restaurant, less money to go to a local bar, less money to go to a local hardware store, less money circulating, and it, it hits business construction work, and it hits construction workers and engineers and you know, I would build a state that, that produces jobs, not a state that, that out-migrates jobs and tells people there's no future here. Talking with state representative, former state representative Les Gear, represented downtown Anchorage Democrat. He's considering, he's eyeing this upcoming gubernatorial race because after four years, the sitting governor has to run for re-election which I believe Mike Dunleavy plans on doing. A lot of the folks that listen to this program support Mike Dunleavy. I wanted to give you a different perspective. 
And so we brought Les on. We're going to come back. I want to talk to him about the success or not, what grade he gives the governor. I give him high marks for how he's handled COVID and the pandemic, and particularly when you look at Matsu or Kenai Peninsula, where they left things open, things thrive compared to the Miss Valley of Anchorage. We'll get his take on that. That's next up with Les Guerra on the Tom Anderson Show. This is the Tom Anderson Show, broadcasting live from the KVNT studios, 7 to 9 a.m., Monday through Friday. Former state representative and assistant attorney general restaurateur, at least a owner, a part owner of one. Do you still own the, the restaurant, the Snow City Cafe part of it? Yeah, I got a massive, I think, what, maybe 5% share. Whoa, and, so uh, you get uh, free uh, scramble uh, eggs. Uh, <laughs> And you can respect this, Tom. I'm a, the law says I got to be a silent partner. I'm not allowed to like say anything about. So you know, I'm just an investor. So uh, so at least at least they don't have to listen to me, right? Well, uh, I you know I've had Ethan's a buddy, and and I've had Ethan on many a time, Berkowitz, and and he. Same thing. He didn't say that, but he was like, "Let's not talk about that." And so I and I was like, "I wonder why he never wants to talk about it." That may be well, the same I'll talk reason. about it because it is absolutely one of our favorite. Cafes. Yeah, Rick, Rick, Rick Milliken, our, our executive producer here. You and your wife Lisa love it. He talks about it all the time. They're they're well. Didn't know President Obama eat there? I mean, it's it's uh, it's it's huge. And I don't yeah. care yeah. about politics. When someone says Obama, we have listeners that are hard right. He was the president. You know, I think he's a nice guy, and he loved the food, so that that's pretty big deal. I think when uh, when he came up here, he decided where he was going, right? So, um, and uh, um, but no, I'm proud of the people who work there every day. I mean, look, if you're a if you're a waiter or a waitress or a bus person during COVID, you got the most exposure. You got as, as much exposure as a healthcare worker, right? And these people are going to work not at a hundred thousand dollars a year, really. Mm-hmm you know, busting their chops so they can go get through school or put their kids through school or pay rent, you know. Yeah, but great segue, uh, Les, because I asked that before the break. When I was talking to Les Gear, who may run for governor of the great state of Alaska and challenge Mike Dunleavy, I want to get into who else might run. Could Willikowski run state senator, your colleague back in the day? We'll get yeah. into that. But but let's talk about the governor's grade. I give him high grade. I give him definitely in the A range because of with his team, Zinc and Crom. I mean, those are his soldiers, his his officers. And what they're doing, and they gave, they gave municipalities latitude. I think Anchorage failed in many respects. Where I live, remember, I moved. Matt Sue didn't fail. Uh, Kenai Peninsula didn't fail. And, and that was because the governor gave great latitude. And then you look at, like, full disclosure, Optimum Public Relations, my ad agency, one of our bigger clients is Capstone Clinic. They have COVID Secure, the technology where you could travel, airports, testing vaccinations, the mobile sites, the demo, all these different things that we've seen under the governor's watch. I think we got to give great praise to him, at least there in your mind, wouldn't you say? You know, okay, I, Ann Zink, I think, is a great person. I worked with her when I was trying to sort of uh, beat back the opioid crisis in Alaska, and she was helping me on a bill that would have required doctors and dentists, most of whom do it, but some don't, to tell you that if I give you a prescription opioid, this may become addicting. I want you off of this as quick as you feel like you can get off of it. Opioid prescriptions are addicting, and then they lead to heroin use, and they lead to death. Um, and that's about, boy, the lobbyists came out of the woodworks. And uh, I agree you know, with you on that. Ann wanted to help me, you know, just basically give people full information when they, you know, because how many, anytime you've ever gotten an opioid, have you been told it's addicting? Have you been told to get off it as quick as possible? I, I have not ever had one, but my dad had kidney surgery, and he got on it, and his doc said, hey, you know the, the, the scary part of this. And my dad said, yep, and only took two days of it and then gave back the pills. So yeah. so dad was and, warned, but it's, it is rare, I've heard. Yeah. And good, the good doctors, the best doctors, the best dentists, they all tell people, but but why would you why would you not want to have a law that says everybody should do what the American Medical Association says you should do, which is inform your patients? Sure, and we so, see the litigiousness now in the billions across the state. So I remember you were a champion and instrumental in some of the law changes in a positive way there. So you met Zinc, and I don't yeah. know if you know Crum or not, but I mean that was I like, under. I like Crum. I, I you know yeah, if, so do I, I. If, if I've criticized the um, you know what the governor's done sometimes. I've tried to keep my hands off of it. I think I think Commissioner Crum uh, has an interest in making sure youth 
get jobs and, su- and succeed. We come at it from a different place, but both of us say we want we want people to succeed so they have jobs when they grow up, so they're not on welfare, right? Sure. And uh, so Commissioner Crum, whether he knows it or not, I, you know, I know we come from different perspectives, but but he's one of the ones that I like. So I'm, I'm not out there sort of. I don't think I've ever sort of bashed Commissioner Crown. And I don't want to push you in a corner to say, because I do this often when we have candidates, I say, can't you give a high grade here? And then, you know, after the show, you wouldn't do this. But they're like, why did you push me? I wanted to talk about me. I think you're open-minded to that end. Let's get into, not past, because I suppose we need to look at future, especially if you want. You know, I I haven't been sort of a big voice on, city decisions like this, but I didn't agree with the second closure in Anchorage. I thought, you know, restaurants, if they were going to, if they kept people, tables apart, you know, six feet apart and, and, uh, you know, protected wait staff, sure. you know, they, sh- I didn't think the second closure was warranted. I didn't um, either. And, uh, and the studies were that we're never on those restaurants, um, and places that did their businesses right. Right. They were like, Oh, you know, you can spread infection. I get it. But, but what about these restaurants that do things right? And, and space the tables apart when we were at our height of COVID and, you know, we were getting 200, 300 infections a day. Um, we're not there anymore, but I, I didn't necessarily, I didn't like the second closure. I thought that was, I didn't think that was. I was, I was not happy. It was necessary. Anchorage. Talking with former state representative Les Garrow may run for governor, challenge Dunleavy. It'll be a formidable race. Do you think, Senator, and I know you can't speak for him, but I, it's not gossip as much as it's relevant to the race itself. Do you think that Wilikowski will jump in there to run, or are, do you not care if he does or doesn't? Oh, I like Bill. We, we fish a lot together. Uh, we're we're going to go dip netting in, uh, when he, if he ever gets out of Juneau. You know, uh, and uh, with all these special sessions, but um, will you agree uh, he runs and you don't, or you run and he doesn't? I would hope if you're that close to friends, you say, "Dude, don't run. I'm running. Don't," or vice versa. You know, if I if I decide to run, it's because I feel like I can move the state forward. If Bill decides to run, it's because he decides he can move the state forward. And we've got this. You know, I was not necessarily a big fan, but we've got this. Um, you know, ranked choice voting now. So four. Four people go to the general election, the top four August vote getters. Um, you know, I think if, if Bill ran or, if, you know, if, if any of my friends ran, you know, I think I, I'd hope we'd get to, we'd be the, in the top four. And then, um, oh, and then you, you, you can explain to people how the, uh, the, the November election works. <laughs> yeah, that oh, that'll be a whole nother two hour program. <laughs> well, Les, and, and so we got about three minutes we, yeah. we're, and we'll get you back. We'll get you back and we're going to make a YouTube video of this. You can share to people. Yeah. I know you don't have a website or anything of that nature yet because you haven't decided to launch yet. Right. You'll launch, I'm sure it's not date specific, right? Sometime in the fall, you'll say, hey, I'm going to do it or not. I should try and decide the next time. Um month, month and a half, right? Okay. I think people want their summer back. They didn't have a summer last year. They got a summer this year. So they not to think about it. Running for, running for office summer. <laughs> I hear yeah. you. And and real quick on your points, maybe give me your top three or five points. Now you got two minutes. Yeah, you know, I'm going to give you this. I want to dispel this sort of BS that you hear during campaigns. Um, um, I'm a big supporter of the oil industry. I just think they should pay their fair share and not get subsidies from the state when we can't afford schools and we can't afford a university, we can't afford job training, we can't afford construction jobs. Uh, some of these, uh, some of these oil companies, with their exemptions, pay no no production taxes at all, um, and um, uh, on new fields. Uh, and so, I actually wrote a letter to the Obama administration when the Conoco wanted to open up into the National Petroleum Reserve, saying, "You're not giving them a permit to build a bridge to get to oil that we need to produce." And and you know, I don't know what impact that had, but. Uh, uh, you know, I, I support opening Anwar. I'd be kicked out of sort of any liberal club in the lower 48, right? Uh, by Alaska standards, I'm a Democrat, but I believe in oil production. I believe in oil jobs. I believe in mining. I believe in every single mine that we have online today. I don't support the pebble mine. I think that's, you know, I think we got to protect our fishing streams, and we got the world's greatest salmon and trout fishing uh, in Bristol Bay. I don't think you put a mine at the headwaters of the best fishing left in the world. I'm, ho- I'm um, hoping you but, feel the same on Tongass, because I'm not a fan of getting into Tongass or Pebble Mine, but I am a fan of Anwar. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, it's it's going to be expensive to develop, right? Anwar, but I support it, and I've always voted to support and it. But, on Tongass, uh, roadless rule, you like that or not? Do you think we should get in there and start cutting down the trees or not? You know, I think there are places you can log in the Tongass, um, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I've got to say, I'm not the expert on the Tongass, uh, and... 
And and at some point, even though you and I support opening Anwar, right, and you and I support a lot of these things, these things are decided at the federal level. And on the sort of state level, you pretend you can have an impact on yeah. stuff when you can't. It's uh, true. But uh, It's like the right to life or choice, and people get into that like on school board. And it's like, dude, you're not going to deal with that at all. Don't I? When I was school board, they asked me those questions. I'm like, come on. I'm not yeah, going to be like, overviewing issues, that. You know, the legislature said, hey, let's vote on Anwar. So I was like, all right. I mean, Congress gets to decide it. But, yeah, I support you support it. Well, Les Garrett, we'll get you back. We're out of time here. We're going to make a video of this. If you do decide to run, we'll get all your information, how people can can connect with you. And there'll be many more conversations we can have and maybe even take calls if you decide to run. Does that sound good? Sounds good. And I've always supported and, I, and, I've, and I've pushed funding the police, right? I believe funding police. We need police in our communities. The whole defund the police thing, I think, is crazy. Yeah, no, um, I, knew, so. I knew that already. Well, next time we get you on, we'll talk about critical race theory. We'll talk about Alaska Natives and indigency. So many things. Les Guerra, it's been a pleasure. Former state representative may run for governor. We'll let you know when he does. Tom Anderson Show. Mm-hmm.